Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to try to help you better understand digital audio. It's a feature that's available on most modern media devices, as well as monitors and soundbars and home theater equipment, and it can be a little confusing because of all the different acronyms and terminology on the market. So I'd like to start with a brief history of digital audio, just to explain where it came from and how it compares to analog audio, and then I'll cover the terminology used for the interfaces and the cables, so you understand exactly what you need to connect your devices together, and then I'll come back and actually show you how you can easily convert a purely digital audio output device to an analog input device, just in case you've got some older equipment at home. So digital audio has been around for an awful long time. I'll go back to 1980, which is really when it started. Before 1980, we were using analog devices. So we had cassette players and record players and 8-track players. Those were all analog devices. And you basically connected those together using a cable that looked just like this, where you've got two RCA connections, one left and one right, and this would plug into your cassette player, the other end would plug into an amplifier, and your audio would be transferred across this as an analog signal, so a sinusoidal signal across that cable. The problem with that was you had loss in the cable, so the longer cable you had, the lower the amplitude getting to the amplifier. The bigger problem, though, is this. Listen close. You hear that? That's noise. And the problem with most cables were they couldn't reject that noise. So if you were operating your analog devices in a room that had fluorescent lights or other appliances running, that noise would get amplified along with your audio. So around about 1980, Sony and Philips got together and were working on technology that would store audio in a digital format. So they were trying to get away from records and cassettes and all the rest of it that stored it in an analog format, and they wanted a purely digital device, and they developed the compact disc player, the CD player. And that stored audio information on a disc as pulses of light, and it would read those pulses of light, and they were ones and zeros. And as part of that development, they came out with a standard they called SPDIF, which is a term you're gonna hear a lot in digital audio. That stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. And when they came out with that standard, they designed it to primarily communicate that digital information inside the device, but they also wanted to be able to use it outside the device to connect it to an amplifier over a purely digital medium. Now, since then, right around 1983, Toshiba got involved and said, okay, you guys have developed this as part of an internal project. We're gonna develop a cable that connects up your new device that's digital to a digital amplifier. And they came out with a Toslink cable, which is Toshiba Link cable. And that's what you hear a lot in the digital space where you're connecting up a digital device to a digital amplifier. You're typically using a Toslink cable or a mini Toslink cable. And that's where those two terms came from. Now, there's another way to connect up a digital device as well. There are coaxial cables, which would be one of these, because you don't need to because it's a digital signal, but it's a different style device. You really can't use these RCA audio cables, the analog audio cables to connect it because they'll pick up a lot of noise, but it's a high quality cable, really good shielding on the outside of it, typically gold contacts on the end, and it's normally an orange connection, which is the way you'll, you'll determine digital audio output on your devices. If you see one of these with an orange ring around it, it's probably digital audio output, but you'll plug this into your device, plug the other end into the amplifier, and that's how you make your digital connection. So that SP diff can transfer both over optical, which looks like this, this is a Toslink connection, or it can transfer over a cable like this, a coaxial cable. Those are your two choices. So again, Toslink or mini Toslink versus the RCA. Now, if you're using a Toslink cable, this is actually communicating those pulses as light. So it's actually sending those digital ones and zeros over the cable as pulses of light. When you connect it up to this, you can look in the end, you'll see a red light there in the end of this. That's the pulses from this communicating the audio. Now, where it gets tricky is, both of these cables still have loss, so you have to be very careful, especially with this kind of cable, because since it's transferring optical, I should say it's transferring light pulses, you've got fiber optic cables inside here, which are actually sending the light pulses all the way through that fiber optic. So you have to be careful if you're using a Toslink cable like this, not to kink it too much, and to get one with a good quality casing on the outside that doesn't let it bend an awful lot, and try to keep them as short as possible, because again, if they get longer, you're gonna have loss of those light signals, it's gonna degrade over the length of the cable, and you're not gonna get that pure audio quality. So that's pretty much where digital audio came from. Now the way it differs from analog audio is that analog audio is communicated in what's called a sinusoidal wave, which is sort of a, a curvy wave like this, and the amplitude can vary and the frequency can vary to give you that transfer of audio across the cable. Digital audio is just ones and zeros, just like any other digital component. It's sending ones and zeros across there. It's being decoded on the other end back into the audio that was sent across that cable. Now what's tricky about this is that you have a lot of different standards you can use out there. The two, that, again, that are most prevalent are a Toslink cable like this or a mini Toslink, which basically communicates with optical light pulses, 
or a coaxial cable like this. Both of these work really well. They both have advantages. This one tends to be a little bit cleaner. This tends to pick up a little bit more noise. Um, these are a little less expensive than these are, but really what it comes down to is whatever device you're connecting to probably has one of the two connections on the back for digital audio. So you're gonna use whatever connection they've got. Now for this example, I'm gonna show you how to convert digital audio back to audio that's analog, uh, that's got a Toslink connection on the back of it. It doesn't have a coaxial connection. But let's pretend for a second that you bought some beautiful new device that has digital audio output but your home stereo system is only analog, you can't connect digital directly up to an analog device. You need to convert it somehow between the digital and the analog. Now, O-Ray makes a series of these digital to analog converters, which will take that digital input, either in this case as a Toslink or a coaxial, and convert it to an analog output left and right. And that's exactly what this device is designed to do. So what I'll show you now is, there's a video playing right here from that media player, and there's audio attached to that. You can't hear it because the monitor doesn't have an audio output but the audio is being sent across this digital cable. So I'll connect that up to the Toslink input on the back of this converter. I'll connect up power to it as well, because it's a powered device. And then all I have to do is connect up the output. Now it's gonna hum, obviously. I'll connect up the output to it. And when this video starts again, you hear the audio come out over here. And what this is showing you, there you go, is I've got digital input right here, which are those series of light pulses, I've got analog output coming out the other side, which is that sinusoidal waveform I talked about. So this little device allows you to use your modern digital equipment with older stereo equipment as well. And there are converters that'll go the other direction as well, but this is a way you can preserve your older equipment with some of the newer equipment you've got at home. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, just to review, there are two connections you can use for digital audio. It's either gonna be coaxial, or it's gonna be an SP diff connection like this, or I should say a Toslink connection like this. You wanna make sure that if you're using that Toslink connection, you keep it as short as possible. You don't kink it, because if you kink it, you could interfere with the way those light pulses are being sent across that coaxial inside or the, the optical inside. And as far as the coaxial goes, if you're gonna use a coaxial connection like this, make sure you get one that's set up for digital audio. Even though you can kinda of cheat and use the older RCA style like this, I guarantee you're gonna pick up a lot of audio and there's gonna be issues, or a lot of noise, you're gonna have a lot of issues with the audio. So spend a few extra dollars, get a decent quality digital audio cable that's coaxial and you'd be all set. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So as confusing as it sounds, once you understand what the terms mean and where they came from, hopefully it simplifies things for you. So until next time, thanks again for watching.